Is it the end of gaming as we know it, or will indie games save us? Hit like if you love and support indie games. So I made two videos discussing the current state of the gaming industry, comparing the quality of games in the late 90s and early 2000s to what we've seen in recent years from those same companies, and from gaming in general, how games are now made with monetization much more in mind instead of quality, the difficulties of making games because a lot of it has been done before, and the challenges that game developers face today versus those in the past. Now, most people agreed in their various ways that the state of gaming has gone downhill drastically in recent years, and could see that the problems we face as consumers when it comes to deciding on what games to purchase. However, on both those videos, there are a few comments that said, it's okay because we have indie games, speaking about indie games like they were the saviors of the gaming industry. And while I think many of us just kind of accept this as true, or an acceptable statement to make, couldn't help but think there was something about this that wasn't quite right. It seemed from the comments that I saw, the general argument is, well I only play indie games and I'm having a great time, so it doesn't matter or therefore this is wrong. Well, indie games solve this problem, or well, this is why we need to support indie games. Of course, we absolutely should support the solo and small development teams who are trying to bring back passion and innovation to the industry, especially over the much larger companies who only seem to care about profits or culture wars. That doesn't mean it solves the larger issue we have in the gaming industry today. And for every comment that made this argument, I would ask, well, which indie games would you recommend them to both myself and other gamers who might feel the same way about the state of the gaming industry. And some people did give a list of games that they played that weren't made by big studios that they thought were great. However, many said nothing, no response. They could have said at the time, no, this is wrong and here's a list of games. While the title, Why Video Games Suck Now, might seem like a statement that was meant to apply to all video games, the actual intention of the video that seems to have been slightly lost along the way was to raise awareness of what we face in the gaming industry today versus what we had in the past. And these issues affect all games made now including indie games. And I don't think it's as simple as indie games fix this. You think they aren't coming for indie games as well? You see, most indie developers are not all spending 5-10 to 10 years of their life making a game so that they can give it away for free. Most are probably doing it because they see a gap in the video game market and they're trying to fill it, and or they have a passion for making games or for nostalgia just like the early days developers that started these game companies that have become massive franchises that still exist today. We referenced Activision in the previous video, and how they started by working for Atari, and when they weren't getting the recognition that they thought they deserved, they went on to form their own company, who grew and earned the trust of consumers, but then who ultimately became the evil that they were trying to get away from in the beginning. There's nothing to stop what happened to the mainstream industry from happening to indie games. They still want to make the money that justifies the time they spent on developing that game. But as they grow into larger studios or get bought up by bigger ones, we run the risk of having that same problem all over again. That's why these videos aren't targeting indie devs or the big studios. They're gonna do what they do. No, these videos are for gamers, for the consumers, the people buying these games, and primarily the ones that are being sucked in by these big companies. Rather than just jumping on the hype bandwagon every time a new game is released, we need to be looking at what these companies have done in the past when they've taken your money and not given you the product that they promised. It needs to be laid out there for people to see. The buck stops with us. And in actuality, blind faith in these so-called indie devs long term could be a negative. Perhaps a more sensible approach would be, let's wait and see. We all saw the problems we had recently with Helldivers 2. Not exactly an indie studio, but promoted as the anti-AAA title, being nearly half the price of a mainstream entry. But no one seemed to really pay attention to the fact that it was published by Sony, PlayStation Studios. So it got the support that an indie game might garner, and then the players got duped by Sony, swooping in at the end to put their mark on it. And some say that's not the developer's fault. Well, they chose to get into bed with Sony, so kind of is. Another point that seems to have been missed, man I'm gonna get tired of saying indie games, non-AAA or non-mainstream titles aren't competing in the same arena as the AAA or AA's. Having fewer resources to make a game or being a solo dev likely means that you're not making the types of games that were made in the past that gamers fell for and turned into epic franchises that somehow stood the test of time. Probably not making a Metal Gear series or a Deus Ex or Final Fantasy or Call of Duty or Battlefield. They might come close or they might succeed in their own way, but they're not really going to match or beat them in my estimation. So if you want the great epic games that we grew up with in the 90s and early 2000s, 
you're still going to have to turn to the bigger studios. But the bigger studios aren't going to make those games unless they get pressure from the consumers to do so. And so indie games aren't solving this problem. Not yet anyway. And again, this isn't to trash the indie devs or the games they make. I've played a lot of them and I have enjoyed them. I'm not saying we shouldn't support them. I'm saying we should support them more if they are to become a true threat to the big companies that are still currently dominating the market. So it's not just a niche thing that people run away and hide in. And what if we don't support them? Will it mean a collapse in gaming in the near future? No, probably not and hopefully not. Mostly because there will always be those that don't fully understand the system yet without making the casual versus hardcore gamer argument. But you'll always have your farm bills, your raid shadow legends, and people will constantly be pouring money into FIFA and Madden and COD every year. But it might mean that Gacha Star games and this disgusting addiction, dopamine, hype-seeking style of monetization will be the only thing that you have access to. Because it just won't be worth it for the people who do still have a passion for making new and amazing gameplay experiences to compete with the psychology of marketing strategies that have currently been employed by mainstream titles. So I don't think it's enough to simply say, well, we've got independent video game companies now, so it doesn't matter. I think it is still important to try and reach out to those millions and millions of players who are still hooked into the AA and AAA industries. Those are the minds of the people that we still need to free. Now, if you made it this far, Thank you very much, and please subscribe so we can keep this conversation going. It's important for those that play indie games to catalogue and share their experiences with others. The majority of gamers don't want to wade through the sea of indie games trying to find one that compares to the experiences that they've had in the past. And there's plenty of indie games that have absolutely swallowed my time. They are out there, but I don't think people are really doing enough to promote them. Again, I think it's this lazy blanket statement drop and then just run away. I'd like to showcase more of those indie games on this channel, so if you have any recommendations of indie games that you think are really worth playing, drop them down in the comments below. Thank you to everyone who gave their opinion and subbed and liked on the previous videos. It's great to know that there are so many intelligent, thoughtful people out there that really do care about this. And coming together in this kind of form and discussing what these issues are and what we can do to try and help fix this situation is what needs to happen. So while indie games have come a long way and there are some amazing, interesting games coming out, there are many that still aren't quite on the same level as the AA and AAA titles that most consumers are buying. They aren't all making the masterpieces of the late 90s and early 2000s that evolved into those beloved franchises decades later. If they were, then that's what everyone will be buying instead. And while there are some great examples of amazing standout titles within the indie world, there is also a sea of mid-games that have flooded the indie world that are lumped in all together. And again, this is a problem that we had in the early era of gaming, when any third-party company could make a game for a system, and we had no idea of what the quality would be. And the people that are vouching for indie games need to put the effort into actually categorizing and promoting games that are of decent quality. But we also need to remember that even if smaller studios aren't tied to a monopoly of game companies, there's no guarantee that they won't sell out later on down the line and become the very evil they swore to destroy. So once again, it's up to us to identify and reward those that choose quality and integrity over greed, which is exactly what I said in both of those videos. So go and check those out, have a look at the comments, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.